comes and preaches this morning. Thank you, church. Why don't you grab a seat? Come on, let's give it up for the mother of the house. Come on, let's give it up for Pastor Debbie. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Too much, bro. Oh, what a morning. I did say to um, Josiah, please make sure I'm on mute during the praise and worship because I have this awful fear that they'll switch me on and my voice will empty the auditorium. And uh, I, I did say, please make sure I'm on. Thank you. I didn't lip sync. I really got it. How could you lip sync? In the time of praise and worship to the King of Kings, you cannot lip sync. You've got to give it your all. And that was just an awesome time. Before I get into the sermon today, I just want to do a bit of a shout out to our Replenish Conference. Replenish Conference is a Neelam Women's Conference that's run every year. And this year, it's going to be a little bit different. With the um, season we're in, where things get cancelled, we're actually going to be doing Replenish Conference in-house. We're going to be doing them in groups of 10, and we've got hosts that are going to host 10 women, maybe in their home, it may be in this building, it may be in someone else's home, but we're going to do groups of 10, and that's going to be on June, Saturday, the 18th of June. I want to encourage you, it's $15, ladies, I want to encourage you to put your name down today before you leave. We will have more information coming, but I just want to do a little plug today, just to encourage our women to come together and I know that you men are going to stand up and those that have little kitties they're going to say sweetheart go put your name down I'll look after the kids amen so I'm going to do a couple of um, jokes in Pastor Trevor's style and I thought I would start with those before I get into my message today so this one here when church is over and you're trying to leave but your mom keeps talking <laughs> Well, that's the story of Caleb Brody and Luke's life, and any elder, any leader in this um, fellowship can relate to that. For years, the kids would say, when are we going? So my, one of my boys sent me that a few years back, not that long ago, because we didn't have um, media the way we, we do nowadays. But I always remembered, yeah, my poor kids, that little face says it all. And the next one, we're going to pop it up. When your mum includes info about you and her sermon that you didn't want people to know. <laughs> That has happened many times, so Brody, I'm going to apologize now for what's in here. I'm sorry if you didn't want the people to know it's coming out. And I want to shout out to my boys. I don't know if Caleb's watching or if he's here, but really, look, you got COVID on Mother's Day. Seriously. You could have found a better excuse not to come to church, look, really. Luke always comes to church on Mother's Day. It's the one day I can reel him in. But he has said, quote, I will do it another Sunday. So I'm going to hold you to that, looky boy. But you know what to you, if you've come to church today and you've come to support a parent, I really honor you today. And I believe God's got something really special for you this morning. Do we believe that, church? Amen. So, um, yeah, I thought I'd just start with a little story on Lucky. I remember we had, I'm picking on Lucky today because he's not here, but I remember we had Fijians staying with us. They, we had stayed with them many, many years, and they'd come and stay with us. Uh, Randini and uh, Miriam came and stayed with us. So Trevor's already gone to church. We were in Elderton Avenue, and the boys, of course, you know, you're like, as a pastor's wife, you are like a solo mom. You're getting all the kids together, you're getting them into the car, and you're getting them to church. And who knows on the way to church, if anything's going to go wrong, that's when it's going to go wrong. So I hear this, we're ready to go, we've got our van loaded up, we've got our two beautiful Fijian sisters who are going to be sharing in Christopher Street, and I hear smash, bang, wallop, thump, and I walk in, and nosy neb looky, he was in the fridge, and he couldn't work out what was in the casserole, it was lunch, and he pulled the casserole, he tipped the casserole, and the casserole was all down him, so we had to run, pop him in the shower, hose him off, and I remember that morning sitting in church, and I was still picking carrots out of his hair. Honest to goodness, the smell, because it was like a really quick, uh, it wasn't a proper washing condition, it was a quick rinse off. But you know, I just want to touch briefly on Pastor Sermon, Pastor Trev's sermon last week. It really spoke to me. We heard about, if you weren't here, you need to listen to that sermon online. We heard about Jehovah Jireh. 
And I heard Jehovah Jireh in ways that I didn't line up before. You know, I thought that was all about our provision, but you know, it's so, so much more. And we heard how Jehovah Jireh will give us the courage and the strength we need to forgive people. It's not just about what we receive naturally, but it's what he'll release to us spiritually as well. We heard how Jehovah Jireh, in fact, it's probably the first mention of Jehovah Jireh, where Abraham takes Isaac and he's going to sacrifice him. But Jehovah Jireh provides a ram. And at the last minute, Isaac was saved. And I just um, write down, Claire, if Claire can make her way up, that would be great. And if uh, Paul can reach her the mic, that would be great. So we had a bit of a messenger group going on through the week. And this is Claire and Jeff. Claire's been hanging around me a lot, so now she sounds a bit like me. So um, yeah, I don't know how she done that, but she did. And this awesome couple are getting ready to move back to the South Island, and I'm not happy about it. But besides that, they um, we thank God for the time we had with them and we're going to have a house and a bed now in Christ Church which we're really excited about but Claire come and just briefly share what our messenger chat looked like this week so Morena everyone I'm Claire as, Deb, as Debbie says um, yeah so Deb just wanted me to share a word of God's provision that's been happening in our life during the past week and Jeff and I, we've had it on our hearts for a while to move back down to Canterbury. Yeah. And in February time, we came across a lifestyle property in Canterbury and we thought, oh, this is perfect. This is the one. This is the time to go. And so we put everything in place. Mm -hmm. um, we got our house on the market. I went down to see the property, fell in love with it, and we got an offer in. And the offer wasn't accepted. Absolutely devastated. But, you know, we had our house on the market, so we just thought, let's just continue on with this process and see what happens. And so things started falling into place. We eventually, we got our house sold. We got the movers in place to move everything. My workplace um, said that I could work remotely from Canterbury, which is a blessing that I wasn't wow. expecting. Come on. Yeah. And the one thing that wasn't really quite coming together was finding a property down in Canterbury. And we were looking and looking, and we saw things that might tick some of the boxes, not all of the boxes, and we're like what do we do? We had an offer in on another place that got rejected as well. And, you know, we were starting to feel like, have we made the right decision here? Are we on the wrong track? Maybe it's not Darfield, maybe it's somewhere else, maybe we're supposed to stay in Tauranga, I'm, I'm not sure. And we were starting to doubt ourselves a bit and we were praying really hard about it. Friends and family were praying. And Friday a week ago, um, Jeff sent me a link to a word for today. I think it was UCB or something. And I actually just want to share what the verse was from that word for today. And it was 1 John chapter 5, verses 13 to 15, which says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. And this is the confidence that we have toward him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests that we have asked of him. And so I was thinking that over that day and I was lying in the sun and just basking in the warmth because my spirit animal is a cat. And <laughs> I was just mulling things over and I was talking to God and I said, look, God, I, I know you've got this worked out and I know everything will come together, but I'm just really ready for you now to tell me what the next thing is. I, I want you to show us and I want you to give us that direction. And as I was praying that, my phone rang. And initially I thought, who is this rude person interrupting my, my prayer time? How dare they? And it was the estate agent who we've been in contact with down in the South Island. And um, I answered and she said, Claire, Claire, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I think I've got the perfect property for you. I was like, okay, bold claim, but tell me more. And she started telling me about the property. And I said, like, yes, this sounds like it ticks all of the boxes. This sounds great. And so over the next couple of days, um, we were in contact with her. She sent us photos of the property, videos, all these things. <laughs> And over the course of the weekend, by the Monday, we had a verbal offer accepted on that property. And during the week, we have had everything put in place to go unconditional on Friday. And, you know, there's just been some small things like the settlement date, which seems like a minor thing, but it's meant that we can leave our property in Tauranga on the Thursday, travel down to the South Island and move into our new property on the Monday. We don't have to pay for storage. We don't have to impose on friends. We're just straight in there. And I suppose I just want to say, you know, God does provide. Yeah. 
be persistent in prayer and don't be afraid to ask the Lord what you want because he will answer your prayers even if it's not the answer that you want he will always answer and you know I do believe that God has a sense of humor as well and I'll just leave you with something really profound for those of you who were listening to Pastor Trev's sermon last week we got the videos of the property through on Sunday afternoon and it had blue carpets and cream walls so yeah that's awesome Claire You had to be here. That's why you need to listen to the sermon. We talked about when we were moving, how one of our nannies in Gisborne seen our home and she's seen it empty and she's seen a new home waiting for us. And she said, you know what, Pastor Trev, that house had cream walls and and blue carpet. And we thought she was mixed up because the home we were leaving in Gizzy had cream walls and blue carpet. Claire messaged us this week and said, Jehovah Jireh has provided a home for us. And guess what? It's cream walls and blue carpet. (laughs) Come on, he cares about the little things, guys. Absolutely. So, Lord, we thank you for your word today. Lord, may it go forth, Lord. May it touch hearts, Lord. May um, you be lifted high in this place this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. So today's sermon is called God Sees You. You know, um, I just want to remind you, not only does God see you, but he hears you. Not only does he hear you, but he knows the hairs that are on your head. Not only that, he knows when you're seated and he knows when you rise. He knows everything about you. And in fact, the thoughts that he has for you aren't as many as the the sand grains on Mount Monganui Beach. It says the sand on all the shores. And we can't comprehend that. But to God, you are amazing. And whether you're um, a child of God or you're making that journey to become a child of God, he knows knows you and he sees you. He has a plan and he has a purpose for every person in this room today. And although it's Mother's Day, I've kept my sermon very much that this is going to speak to men as well as it's going to speak to women today. So God sees you. You know, um, today I have chosen a character from the Bible and I've particularly chosen someone that I've asked all week, I've asked my colleagues, I've asked my friends, I've asked someone this morning who I class as a, as a very godly man, and no one has been able to tell me about this character in the Bible. I've purposely picked this person because you don't know her, but you do know her. Now you know she's a girl. But you don't know her, but you do know her. So I want you to honestly put your hand up, not if you've heard her name, but if you know this character from the word. And I want you to raise your hand, and you better tell the truth, because I might call you out and ask you who she is. So have you heard of Jochebed? Or Jochebed? He knows because I've told him. Put your hand down. That doesn't count. Jochebed. I can tell you here and now that you know Jochebed. You know her better than you think you know her. And um, I'm going to ask for the next uh, slide to go up. This is Jochebed. She is the mother of Moses. We all know the mother of Moses, but we don't necessarily know her by her name. Can I tell you, people in this room today, and you think you're invisible, you're not invisible to God. God sees you. You know, for years I've been known as Caleb's mum. I've been known as Brody's mum, and I've been known as Luke's mum. I've been known as the pastor's wife. I've been known as Frankie and Flory's youngest daughter. I've been known as the audiology technician in Gisborne Hospital. I've been known as the registrar at Bethlehem College. And honestly, most people don't know who I am, but God does. I don't know what you're known by. You see, maybe you're known by the vet who owns the vet at Barks Corner. Maybe you're known by the wife of the vet who owns Barks Corner. Maybe you're here and you're the guy that owns Pookie Pine, weren't you on the TV recently? Maybe you're here today and you're that lecturer from BTI. The family's all from up the coast. You know the one. Maybe you're the guy that works at the port. Doesn't his wife work at Pregnancy Choice or something like that? Can I tell you what? You may not be known to people by your name. You may be the rugby coach. You may be the netball coach. But I can tell you one thing's for sure. Our Father, our Lord knows who you are. And he sees you. People may not know you by name, but 
that God knows who you are by name. And I've totally lost my place, but I'm back on track again. Jochebed was the mother of Moses, but not only was she the mother of Moses, she was the mother of Miriam and Aaron also. She not only um, gave birth to one great leader, but she gave birth to three amazing leaders. She was an incredible mother. You know, Moses was going to be the deliverer. He was going to deliver the people, and she was his mother. And I purposely, purposely picked her for today's sermon. Her name means Jehovah glorified. Wow, Jochebed. And she certainly glorified Jehovah. You know, um, they, uh, there were horrific laws that were being brought in by the king at the time when she was pregnant with Moses. Now, you've got to know she's had three children. And now, how things are going to work with Moses are going to work very differently to how it was when she had Aaron and when she had Miriam. Because the Pharaoh, the king, has brought in this horrific law. He wants to cause genocide. He wants all the male babies to be murdered because he's paranoid. He's looking out and he's watching the numbers of the Israelites growing and he's starting to get scared. And so his way around this is he's going to murder all the babies. He's going to have them murdered. All the male babies. So Jochebed is going to have to do life differently than how she did it with her other children. You know, in this season, we've had to do things differently. Some of you have lost loved ones. You had to do it differently this time around. You know, there were weddings that were canceled. There were people who had had babies, even in this fellowship, in a season where the father wasn't even allowed into the hospital. And it was a, it's a different way of doing things, and it was certainly a di- going to be a different way for Jochebed with her third son. She was a courageous mother. She was incredibly courageous. And we're going to read now. And where you see yellow behind me, we're all going to say it. Is that okay? Can we have that? Brilliant. So I'm going to read from Exodus 1, 15 to 22. The king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, whose names were Sapphira and Pua, when you're helping the Hebrew women during childbirth on the delivery stool, if you see that the baby is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, let her live. The midwives, however, feared God and did not do what the king of Egypt told them to do. They let the boys live. Then the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and asked them, why have you done this? Why have you let the boys live? He could see there were all these little nippers starting to appear and he knew that they hadn't followed through. The midwives answered and said, Hebrew women are not like Egyptian women. They are figurous and they give birth before the midwife arrives. (laughs) That sounds wonderful. So God was kind to the midwives and the people increased and became even more numerous. And because the midwives... He gave them families of their own. Verse 22, Pharaoh now gives the order to all the people. Every Hebrew boy that is born, you must throw into the Nile, but let every girl live. His plan wasn't carried out by the midwives, and so now he's going to extend the people to make sure that these Hebrew boys are not going to live. But these women, these these midwives were God-fearing women. Can I tell you something? To fear God, men or women, it's not cowering in a corner being frightened of God. Our God is the most amazing father that you will ever, ever have. He's not like your earthly father. Even if your earthly father's amazing, well, it's still nothing on God. And, uh, you know, he is an amazing, but he had a plan for these women. And it says that they went on to have families of their own. And possibly in those days, the midwives were committed to being midwives the whole way through. But God's favor extended to them. You know, they could have carried through and there would have been favors for them. And I'm sure disobeying the Pharaoh, the king, could have brought, could have cost them their lives, basically. Maybe less than that, maybe they'd have been put in prison, but still they took that risk. Incredible. 
We hear twice how they feared God. Fearing God is having a reverence for God. Fearing God is knowing what his character is and, and doing your best that you can do to follow through on that. We don't, God doesn't want us carring in the corner. And now I'm going to recap. We're going to move to Exodus 2. And that's where we hear of this Levite man and woman who we now know as Jochebed and Amran. And you know, when she gave birth to Moses, like when we give birth, we think there's nothing like our baby. I mean, because beauty is in the eye of the beholder and they might look like a scrawny wee rat, but to us they are just the most beautiful baby ever. And I remember um, one of my boys, I'll not say which one it was, and he had long fingers and everyone commented on his long fingers and I said, he's going to be a pianist. And I used to always say, he's going to be a pianist. And then one day someone said to me, he's probably going to be a pickpocket. Um, <laughs> And uh, they may well have been right. Um, I won't say which one it was, but I'm sure you can guess. Anyway, be careful what you say over your children, parents. Speak life, speak encouragement. Yeah, but he was a fine baby. In fact, the word that is used is tov, the same word that is used in Genesis 1 when God says it was good, but it wasn't good. It was really, really awesomely good. And that's what was on this boy. There was something on this baby that was special. It wasn't the beauty in the eye of the beholder for the parents, but there was a call on his life. This young baby had a harmony with God and God was going to use him mightily. Amen. So how do you keep a baby a secret? She had to hide Moses for three months. How do you do that? Remember, everyone's enlisted now to expose these babies. And we've got a little baby next door to us. He's a little Sikh baby. His name is um, Sah Sahab. And we went and seen him recently. Trevor and I are auntie and uncle. We live next door. And uh, he's a brilliant wee baby. But I can tell you something. We can hear him cry. So, and he's a good baby. So hi. Jochebed kept him, you know, quiet because it wasn't, um, you know, it could have been raids through the night, through the day, whatever it might have been, coming in looking for these baby boys. And at, the months, at, at three months, she knows now she has to go to a different plan. Yeah. And, uh, you know, something I never knew till I'd done this study, the very place where she takes her baby to hide the Nile is the very place where the people have been told to take the babies and throw them into. And I had never made that connection until I studied on it this week. So they, the very place where the, you know, because the Nile was, it was like a god to the people. And the big, you know, that's where they were going to take those babies, almost like sacrificing to that god. And that's the very place she takes her child to and she hides him in the rushes. You know, we often imagine him floating down in this cute little basket. That was no cute little basket. It was covered in asphalt and pitch, Brian. You would know all about that because it needed to protect him from the sun and it needed to be waterproof as well. And this may have been a process that she'd done over a series of time. It may not have been the first time she'd done it that the princess finds him. And young Miriam, she is um, given the task of looking over this baby, watching out. She is probably released from the chores, but she gets to watch over the baby. And we know the story that the king's daughter comes, she bathes in the Nile, and she sees the basket. And when they bring it to her, she is overcome with compassion for this little Hebrew baby. No mistake, she knew it was a Hebrew baby. But this is what I love. Here's this young girl, Miriam. She's probably only 10 or 12 years of age. And what does she do? She approaches the princess. Now, that could have cost her her life. But you see, she had leadership modeled to her. She had courage modeled to her. She had strength modeled to her. She had faith modeled to her from Jochebed. So she knew, she watched, you know, your children are watching. They're watching what you're saying. They're watching what they're doing. They're watching if you're backbiting someone. If you're having the pastor for lunch, they're watching and they're listening. But Jochebed was an amazing, amazing 
model for her kids. And so Miriam comes up and she approaches and she said, can I get you a wet nurse? And not only does she get a wet nurse, but she gets Moses' mother, Jochebed. And not only does Jochebed get to take her child and feed her child, probably till he was about four, but she gets paid for the privilege. Come on, Jehovah Jireh, come on. You're getting paid for the privilege. And yet it was bittersweet. She knew the day would come where she would have to release that child. But I can tell you, she would have prayed. She would have dedicated in those four years. He was already molded to be the leader he was going to be, to be the deliverer that God had called him to be. Families, pray over your children. Pray over their beds. Even if they've gone wayward, go into their room. Pray over their, their belongings. Distance is no, nothing to Holy Spirit. We need to be praying for our tamariki, our mokapuna. It's our responsibility. We have got to be doing it. Don't sit back and see what happens. Gosh, no. You can even pray and it can still turn to custard. Hello? You know, the mother who's got the drug addict son, you know, some of the labels we get aren't very nice, I can tell you. Um, some of those labels can be, oh, isn't she, hasn't she got mental health issues? Stop labeling people. Come on. Who does God say you are? Don't wear those labels. Amen? Oh, I'm getting pumped now. Woohoo! <laughs> I want to speak to the young leaders here. Be encouraged. Those young people are up here today. Encourage them. Cheer them on. They may and mightn't do it the way you do it, but cheer them on. I want to say to you, uh, Miriam had the courage that she had because it was modeled to her. I hope to goodness, uh, even as pastors, we are modeling life well. We are modeling walking with Jesus well. Heaven forbid if we aren't modeling that well. Parents, if we're not modeling that well, heaven forbid. Come on, let's model. But I want to tell you, you, your hoodie said all. Don't let anyone look up down on you because you're young. You're wearing that on your back, guys. You need to start walking in it and believing it. God has called you. There is a leadership upon your lives. You know, put aside the, the bickering and, oh, I don't like it this way and I don't like it that way. Lay it down. Become wholly devoted to the King of Kings and let him lead you and let him guide you. And you're going to raise up the next generation. And they're going to go above us and beyond us. And that will be a testimony to the Lord. And his name will be glorified. Amen. Psalm, thanks love. Psalm 139, 16. This is for everyone. You, you saw who you created. God knew who he had created before you even came along. You were formed in your mother's womb. He already knew who you were and what you were going to become before I had even seen the light of day and the numbers of my days you had already recorded in your book. Every single moment you are thinking of me. How precious, wonderful it is to cherish, that you cherish me constantly in your every thought, O oh God. Your desires towards me are more than the grand, I've spoke this already, more than the grounds of sand on every shore. When I awake each morning, you're still with me. And just for confirmation, Claire, I had your scripture as well to use this morning, so God knows. Can I say, don't strive to be noticed. Don't go kicking down doors because when you kick them down, they usually get slammed in your face. Pray to God, let God open the doors. You see, God is watching over you. He knows when you're seated and when you stand. He even knows where you're placed to live. No mistake, we've got little um, Sahib beside us. That's not by accident. I think of a time many um, years ago, I was mentoring an intern. It wasn't through Elam, uh, so don't be trying to work it out, out who it was. It was many years ago. In fact, I wasn't long in Tarong at the time. There was a meeting, and it, I went to this meeting. It was supervisors and mentors. Everyone seemed to know everyone, and I was the new kid on the block. I went into the meeting, and you know, it's, sometimes you just have to be courageous, don't you? Even just stepping in to unusual environments. But I went in there and um, I 
walked up to the first person I saw at the tea and coffee, and I said, hi there, I'm Debbie, and I put out my hand, and uh, this person shook my hand, but they didn't introduce themselves back to me. In fact, they weren't really interested in who Debbie was. And I thought, okay, awkward. And uh, they basically just took off. We had our meeting. We sat around. We discussed which churches we were from. We talked about any issues that we would like resolved to or any help we needed. And after that meeting was over, this guy nearly knocks everyone out of the way to get to me. And I thought, what have I said? What have I done? What, what the heck's going on here? He comes straight for me and he, he said to me, you're Pastor Trevor's wife, you're Pastor Trevor's wife. And I felt like saying, so what's different to when I introduced myself as Debbie? My value isn't in being Pastor Trevor's wife. My identity isn't being somebody else's mom. You see, I want to be valued as a daughter of the living God. And I want everybody in this room to be valued. From the people that walk in that door, from the, from the street, from their addictions, whatever. You could be loving on my son and you don't even know who you're loving on. To the richest doctor, lawyer, whatever you may be, probably politician, coming through that door, I want you to love on them. I want you to value them. I want you to look in their eyes and I want you to value people for who they are. We're just about finishing here. I thought sad, sad. My identity is in who I am in Jesus Christ and people so is yours because God sees you. The change in people's behavior to me when they may arrive here isn't very nice till they work out I'm the pastor's wife. And what that tells me is, that's probably how they treat you. And it's not very nice. I won't tolerate that. Please don't do that. Treat, value everyone that is in this place. Don't name drop to promote yourself. Seriously, God enough is big enough to promote you. Because um, it's not who you are. It's whose you are. I see a lot of self-promotion on, on social media. Guys, it's not who you are, but whose you are. Be the best version of you, whether you're a mother or an adopted mother or a spiritual mother or a father or whatever you are. Be the best version of you. I'm still working on it. And there's a long way to go, but I'm telling you what, if I'm still sitting how I was 20 years ago, there's something badly wrong. Oh, God takes me as I am, yes. But come on, we need to be working and perfecting who we are in him. You know, in Hebrews 11, and we are just about getting ready to finish here if, if um, Isaiah wants to come. Hebrews 11, it's known as the fifth chapter. It's known as the great examples of faith. Can I tell you that chapter will inspire you if you read it. If you need encouraged, go home. If you need a boost in your faith, go home and read Hebrews 11. It's an incredible chapter. And it's not historical trivia. The stories in there are real stories that will change and build up your faith to be the man and woman God has called you to be. I'm going to read a little bit from verse 23, and it says, By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months, and he was born because they saw, and when, sorry, after he was born, because they saw no ordinary child. They were not afraid of the king's edict. They knew there was something special on that child. They knew when they seen him, he was tov. Then the next verse says, By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, he refused to be known as Pharaoh's daughter. Oh, sorry, the son of Pharaoh's daughter. That's like me, refusing to be known as Pastor Trevor's wife. He refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. There were privileges waiting for him, but it says instead he chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. Your reward is ahead. Your reward is still to come. Keep your eyes, keep your gaze on Jesus. His faith 
By his faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered because he saw him who was invisible. Him. Him. God. Father. King of kings. Lord of lords. The might, bright morning um, star. He, 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 he sang. And that's where he kept his gaze. He chooses to be unseen. And yet he sees us. Wow. Sometimes we want to be seen. We want to be seen by everybody. We're going to be unseen by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. At three o'clock this morning, the Lord stirred me. And this is what I'll finish with. I just kept say, this line going over my head, whatever it takes. Church, whatever it takes. I'm going to prophesy it over you. Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. You know, there are people in here. And in the last season, you've just said, whatever it takes. Tony, we'll pick on Tony. Every Tuesday, Tony would message me, Pastor Deb, where do you need me? Whatever it takes. You know, the elders, the leaders, the worship team, the kids. I just want to honor you all because you've done whatever it takes. And you see, Jochebed did whatever it would take to protect the life of her child. Miriam would do whatever it took to protect and watch and approach Pharaoh's daughter. And then the father said to his son, Jesus, I need to send you down to earth. I'm still Jehovah Jireh, but you're going to be the sacrifice. And I'm not going to provide a ram this time. There won't be a way out. You'll give everything. Everything will be taken from you, and you will give everything. And what does he say? Whatever it takes. And even though he goes to the garden, and he calls out, and he says, Father, if you can take this cup from me, yet not my will be done, but your will be done, he stood before the cross, and he said, whatever it takes. There are people here today, and you're not in relationship with this Jesus. You, you haven't stepped across that line, as it were, to bring in him into your life. And so I'm just going to ask now if we could close our eyes and just bow our heads. And if you're here today or you're at home and you're listening to this and your heart is racing and you know that this is your time, whatever it takes, it won't take anything because he's done it all for you. You just have to receive it. Just like the mums came and received a gift today. It didn't cost them anything. They just had to receive it. Today, if you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you just wave with me, I would love to pray with you. And I would love to connect you, whatever it takes. If you're at home and that's you, whatever it takes. If that's you, you've been not really walking with God, and it's now, it's like, whatever it takes, Lord, I need to get right. Just give me a wave. Just searching across this auditorium right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you that you see hearts. And Father, you see hands and you see hearts. And Lord, today, I just pray that you will touch Every person in this room, Lord, every person online, every person that watches this maybe in a week's time, but you will touch their lives, Lord. And Father, they will know you, that they would know that you see them and you see them and you take them exactly where they're at. And for that, we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Paul.